Costa Rica culture is not something that is always easy to navigate for expats who are considering moving down here. Tonight, I want to do my best to give some simple pointers to foreigners who are interested in moving to Costa Rica and specifically to Guanacaste, Costa Rica, about how you can fit in here in Guanacaste. We're going to be talking about some very basic concepts of Costa Rica culture. I'm going to give you a very limited selection of the most important phrases that you need to actually sound like you live here. And no, I'm not talking about Pura Vida. Uh, we're going to talk about some very basic etiquette and courtesy, a couple things that I think foreigners can do to show really adequate levels of respect for Costa Ricans' homes and really in their relationships, adequate respect for those people. And finally, I'm going to finish up with some absolutely critical tips for becoming someone who's recognized as a friendly, well-meaning foreigner living in a small Costa Rica community. I'm not speaking from 10 minutes of experience. I actually was fortunate enough to move here in 2008. At that juncture, I had the opportunity to join the U.S. Peace Corps. I spent two years living with an amazing, humble Costa Rica family here in this area. For the next seven years of my time here in Costa Rica from 2010 until 2017, I was most actively involved in a watershed organization, working with local landowners to try and promote best practices for using farms and protecting water resources. So I'm not the typical foreigner who's moved here and isolated themselves from the local population. I've had my fair share of experiences over the years, good and bad. And again, my goal tonight is not at whatsoever to pass judgment or to give some kind of relative scale of where Costa Rica's values and their practices stack up against foreigners. Instead, really, I'm trying to give basic pointers based on my experience living here for the last 14 years as to how you, as someone moving to Costa Rica, can do just a slightly better job fitting in with the local culture. None of this is going to be rocket science. A lot of it is going to be stuff that you probably have not heard. And I guarantee you, at the very end of our video tonight, I have a moment of beach zen featuring my two sons, Jonas and Daniel, that you're not going to want to miss. I'm going to ask Daniel to give you a little taste here of what we're looking forward to. This is Costa Rica Matt's Costa Rica chat. We're going to be live every single Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Costa Rica time to try and give you simple information about moving here, what it's like to be an expat in Costa Rica, and more specifically, the Costa Rica real estate market. I'm sticking to my pledge this year. I promised to uh, have some better habits in 2022. So I'm all ready this evening with my uh, carrot juice. Thanks very much for joining me here tonight. My name is Matt Rosensteel. I appreciate you tuning in. This is Costa Rica, Matt. Stay tuned. Good evening, folks, and greetings from Playa Junquial, Guanacaste, Costa Rica. My name is Matt Rosensteel. Tonight's theme for my talk is fitting in in Costa Rica, and more specifically, I hope to give pointers to people moving here so that you can have a slightly more successful time jiving with the local culture. It's kind of ironic that I would be making a video about fitting in if Anybody knew me in junior high, uh, they probably remem remember me as the kid who was wearing pressed khakis, sweater vests, 
uh, carrying this leather satchel that I felt made me look really adult because it was kind of like a briefcase. And most of those three years, my books, my bags, everything was on the floor because I ended up picked on quite a deal during those years. But tonight, I want to reflect on my experience having moved to Costa Rica in 2008, lived with Costa Rican families and done a ton of work with people here in different organizations to help you talk uh, in ways that make more sense to locals, uh, use common courtesy and some etiquette that I think can save you some awkward circumstances. We'll just go over some cultural basics. We'll also give some tips for small town living and how to be likable in a small town here in Guanacaste. Before I get started, I do want to uh, mention an extremely uh, important news. Tonight we have a couple of artworks here done by, first of all, Jonas, my seven-year-old. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of him for getting, moving on such amazing paintings, paintings and his inspiration with the beach scenes that he loves. Again, we'll have a beach scene at the very end of tonight's broadcast. And second of all, I wanted to present a drawing by my four-year-old. This is Daniel's picture here. Uh, hopefully I'm getting it somewhat in the frame there. Daniel shows myself and him taking a nap on a bed with our, the, our heads and pillows up here and the blankets down here. In one drawing, he encapsulated my absolute dream come true. So I wanted to share a little bit of where we stand on that before launching into my discussion of Costa Rica culture. Uh, like I said, I moved here in 2008 and lived with a family in Guanacaste. To be clear, most of my comments and the cultural interpretation I have is based on this western province of Guanacaste. Costa Rica is an extremely diverse country with a lot of cultural nuances here and there. So take everything I'm saying with that grain of salt. Uh, Guanacaste is a rural area that was originally, or rather, over the last century, settled for cattle ranching. You saw families moving out here in huge numbers because they could clear land for cattle, fence it in, and the government would give that land to them. So very much, this region was somewhat like the homestead west of the United States of America. How does that matter? Well, we all know that Guanacaste, and you've, you've probably read online endless testimony that Guanacaste is a place where, yeah, the culture is very relaxed. Uh, you really take things at a slow pace where people can be somewhat late to appointments on occasion, and you hear about sort of that romantic, laid-back, rural lifestyle that very much is part of what influences this region today and what can drive foreigners so nuts when they're trying to get something accomplished. I want to mention the, mention the cattle ranching independent history because it's important to understand that while Guanacastecos, the people who live in this part of Costa Rica, Yes, they're extremely relaxed and on the surface, easygoing. They have an absolutely enormous amount of pride. And you see a very strong vein of cultural independence where families who moved out here, homesteaded, cleared their own land, built their farm, did everything for themselves, you might often find that this streak of independence and the frontier spirit is still present today. And it could be something as simple as when you do a very simple thing to offend a Guanacasteco who works for you. If you have a landscaper who's been cutting your, you know, your gardens for years, you run the risk of offending their pride through a number of possible scenarios. And there's a chance that even in a years long relationship, once you've injured that Guanacasteco's pride, they're gonna say adios to working with you. And you'll find that over time here, 
one of the biggest reasons that foreigners cannot maintain long, long-term relationships and vice versa. You know, there's a lot of difficulty in maintaining year after year, very long-term relationships here, especially between employees and employers. Uh, very often that can be because an employer often mistakenly offends an employee in one way or another and never hears from them again and really can't begin to guess what happened. So you've got all of the things you've heard about here in Guanacaste. Yes, people really don't think it's important to be punctual. Uh, yes, you'll find that a lot of things move at a very slow pace and that people don't have any urgency. Um, one of the biggest simple cultural differences you'll notice between a lot of foreigners here and Costa Ricans who are from this area is the simple tension that you feel when you're around somebody from a, a different part of the world, or rather the energy that they bring, the strain to move forward, really sort of an intensity where Guanacastecos in this area have an extremely relaxed pace from everything to showing up to appointments to how quickly they're going to react when somebody says something. It can be very mellow. Uh, and you can tell the difference between foreigners and Guanacastecos very easily many times. If a foreigner and a Guanacasteco are walking down the road, it can be tough to see them keep the same pace. A Guanacasteco has no rush whatsoever. It can be 105 degrees outside, blowing dust down the road. They can actually have an urgent need to get somewhere because they have an appointment. And you'll see them miles behind the foreigner who's maintaining a brisk cadence. Uh, and it's something that permeates very much everybody's uh, rhythm here in Guanacaste. Uh, so if you want to be happy here as a foreigner, my first tip is absolutely try and adopt that pace. You'll fit in and you won't stand out quite as much. And really, you have to be sensitive to people's traditional pride that may mean you can't do certain things with an employee here. You can't yell at them. You can't really call them out for some small mistake in front of other people or you risk a relationship. So be sure to be very delicate with that, especially as you spend your first years here in Guanacaste and get accustomed to what's going on. Delicious carrot juice. Let's go on to phrases here and just some very simple vocabulary to talk about so that you can sound a little bit more like you're experienced here and you don't stick out like a sore thumb. First of all, one of the most important tips I give to everybody, and I'm sure that lots of people are talking about it online, if you are learning Spanish to come to Costa Rica, you do not need to learn tú and vosotros. The entire verb set in Costa Rica is primarily based on yo, nosotros, usted, él, ella, or ustedes, ellos, ellas. If you're not studying Spanish, that probably didn't make any sense. But essentially, I just gave a huge time-saving tip that will get you out of learning one-third of the verb tenses that you usually see in a Spanish classroom. The tú and vosotros are so uncommonly used in Costa Rica and especially in Guanacaste that if you're trying to pick up some Spanish to move to this area, focus instead on just that first person and really only the formal tenses, usted and ustedes, rather than the informal tú and vosotros. Let's talk about greetings and one of the most common mistakes that I hear from foreigners that to me actually uh, makes them stick out a little bit. Here in Costa Rica, yes, hola is a very acceptable hello, and that's what you're supposed to use 
when, for example, you're entering a room or you're about to begin a conversation with somebody, if you're just driving by somebody on the street or if you're having a momentary encounter for one reason or another, you actually don't want to say, hola, as you pass by. That sounds like a very expat thing to do. You want to say, adios. It's something that can be tough to adopt coming from the U.S. or Canada because anytime I'm walking by somebody in Indiana, I always say, hello, hi, how you doing? In Costa Rica, if you want to sound a little bit more like a local and you're walking by somebody on the street, tell them, adios. You can even shorten it and use sort of an you or even kind of grunt that sounds like adios and you. And that's acceptable. Hola will sound very awkward if you're passing by somebody. Second of all, when you greet somebody here in Costa Rica, once you've got some good Spanish or as you're developing your vocabulary, I would highly suggest focusing on the fact that Costa Ricans love a very formal beginning to a conversation with a good number of greeting phrases. Um, I think in Indiana, I also get accustomed to just saying, hey, how you doing? How you been? Ah, good, thanks. And you? And really, it can end there. One of the most wonderful, I think, cultural greetings or the way that people uh, interact with each other here is to ask a number of questions that can sound just routine, but I think more like other cultures in the world. Here they might stack multiple greetings. How have you been? How has your family been? How has your son been? I know he was sick. Really dig into what you know about that person. If the last time you saw them, they were har har harvesting corn or they were on a horse, it can be such a wonderful way to start off the conversation. How are you? How have you been? How's your wife? How's that horse? You know, oh, great. You know, really Costa Ricans and Guanacastecos will know something is up or awkward in a conversation if you don't start out with a very thorough greeting. Now, obviously that's impossible when you don't know a lot of Spanish. What I'm saying is, Yes, pick up a lot of introductory phrases. And because Costa Rica is so warm and accepting, don't hesitate to try and use as many as you can when you meet somebody in the store or on the street just to show them that you're friendly, you're thinking about the last time you saw them, you're thinking about their family, on and on, and more than anything, to be courteous in the way that Costa Ricans are courteous to each other. Continuing with our phrases and our key mistakes that foreigners make here, you hear a thousand words that can mean excuse me or pardon me. In Guanacaste specifically, the most consistent phrase that you can use for that pardon me or excuse me situation is, actually, I'm sorry, for the part in me, it's con permiso. If, for example, you need to slip by somebody in a narrow space, uh, con permiso. If you need to leave an event early and ask permission to sort of be courteous, con permiso. Um, really, you don't see people saying the phrase, I'm sorry, uh, or apologizing in that sort of situation. And con permiso really is that guanacasteco phrase that really is taking leave of somebody or I need to slip by oh, con permiso and you can point and get by somebody in the store. You can also use perdón as a general sort of pardon. Uh, you don't need to say perdóname try and get involved in complex grammar. Two phrases that will get you out of a lot of situations are con permiso and um, to let you know if you want to sound even more like a local, if somebody else says con permiso in the room, like they're asking permission to leave, everybody in the room can re reply propio, meaning you know the phrase is sort of 
with your permission and you'd see people look up around the room and say propio, meaning it's yours, take your leave, etc. There's also a lot of confusion with, with, for people with your welcome. You see um, oftentimes people struggling with con gusto, bienvenidos is welcome as in welcome into a space. One of the phrases that they use here that you might not expect for a ton of situations with you are welcome is bueno. I can't say how clearly in my head I can remember my host parents in the little village where I was in Peace Corps. Every time I say, ah, this is wonderful food. Thank you very much. Bueno. That is a very simple, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Uh, you don't have to say es un placer, con placer. A lot of these complex phrases that I'm sure are stacked up in the, uh, oh gosh, whatever that book, the, <laughs> the uh, Spanish to English dictionary. Anyway, you can just say bueno as a simple way to say, yeah, absolutely, my pleasure, you're welcome. Going back and sort of back backtracking here, one of the greetings I wanted to mention, and this may be something specific to Guanacaste. It may be all over the country. I can't remember from trips other places, et cetera. No matter what time of day it is, the standard way to greet somebody or the most commonly, word, uh, commonly heard word here in Guanacaste is buenas. Yes, you might say, but it's buenos dias. In the morning, I'm sure they say buenos. Absolutely not. You will see Costa Rican guanacastecos greeting each other with buenas every single hour of the day. Buenas noches, buenas tardes. But you don't even have to say those words. You can literally just say to someone, buenas, as a general way to say hello to a room of people or a group. Um, Claude, I love that you're currently learning Spanish. Absolutely appreciate it. Let me know if you have any specific questions because we'll be going over questions in my last Wednesday uh, broadcast of the month, which would actually be next Wednesday, January 26th. So we're talking, we covered buenas as a simple greeting. It's not buenos if it's in the morning, any time of day. Buenas. And finally, um, one of the things that I also hear people messing up a lot is saying that la comida, the food, es muy buena. Or let's say la carne es muy buena, el espagueti es muy bueno. All of these different words to try and say your food is good. The one word that you want to use here in Guanacaste to describe people's food is rico or rica, depending on whether it's a masculine or feminine word you're describing. Ah, if you want to talk in general and just say this meal was wonderful, que rico. If you want to say la comida fue muy rica, it's never buena comida or you very, you only sort of hear that in different situations. The single phrase to make people think you know what you're talking about in Spanish will be, ah, que rica esta comida, or que rico el plato, que rico, muchas gracias. It's always great to lay on the appreciation of the chef here. Um, you know, Costa Rica, I think like many countries in the world, Costa Ricans have a much stronger uh, value for food, or rather, you know, this is a country where in the 50s there were food shortages that affected people here in Guanacaste. This is only recently a place where people have abundant food. So, truly expressing your thanks for what they've cooked and eating every single bite is especially important here in a country where people remember uh, that food is absolutely very valuable. Let's go on to some basic etiquette 
a couple ideas about courtesy, uh, just a few things that foreigners moving to Costa Rica can do so that the Ticos in the room, Ticos are Costa Ricans, might think, ah, uh, there is a well-educated gringo. And that's, uh, well-educated is the translation of how they would say in Spanish, if you're polite, it's bien educado. If you're impolite or rude, it's mal educado, you know, poorly educated, etc. But anyhow, I think that you have a lot of opportunity to show people that you're respectful, that you understand a bit about their cultural norms and not be that ugly foreigner that no one wants to be. First of all, let's talk about walking into a room. And it's something very subtle and absolutely one of my favorite small things that I notice about Costa Rica. It is very polite here. Rather than just coming in to a room with a lot of people in, in it without hesitating, first of all, to pause and wipe your feet at the door. Even if it's the dry season and you don't have a speck of dust on your shoes, even if you're wearing rubber boots and you have cleaned them recently, the motion of wiping your feet at the door is a nice way that a lot of Guanacastecos, you know, they may be coming into each other's houses that before, you know, years and decades past, had dirt floors. They might have been bringing in mud and not really caring about keeping things clean. But definitely when I see Costa Ricans come into a room and there are other people already there at somebody else's house, pause at the doorway, wipe your feet on the ground to just show you're thinking about trying to clean off your feet. And I don't think any Costa Rican would ever call you rude for not doing it, but it's just one way that you can sort of try and fit in a little bit better with real Costa Rican um, families. Uh, another item I wanted to touch on um, in terms of walking into a room, it's polite to, to greet everybody from the doorway in almost any circumstance, I've been at the funeral mass for somebody that was already underway. The mass had started 15 or 20 minutes ago. The priest was moving through the ceremony and somebody coming into the back of the church so showed up at the entrance, wiped off their feet and said, as you may predict, buenas in a, in a very, you know, not whisper voice, because this is a very polite thing to do in almost any circumstance. If you're interrupting a meeting, even then you'd see that people, rather than slinking in the door and trying to take a seat, like you've, you know, you might see at board meetings or, you know, American, Canadian sort of organizations, here, even if somebody is 45 minutes late, the meeting's begun, we're into important business. You can walk up to the door, wipe your feet and say, buenas, and expect that people will consider, okay, this was a polite acknowledgement of who's in the room and they didn't just come ramming in and sort of expressing their presence right away. Moving on from entering a room, if you are from the US, Canada, and some parts of Europe, it's possible that your volume, uh, the, you know, how loud you speak is much louder than Costa Ricans. And it's something that nobody realizes. I have to constantly remember myself because when you're selling stuff, you're supposed to try and match the, you know, tenor of your client's voice. Uh, we can be very loud we use kind of our throats to really project with our voices. And I've seen conversations that I feel are utterly awkward because you've got a U.S. citizen on one side who is using a normal, you know, like we're in an argument kind of semi-shout, and the Costa Rican on the other who's honestly never dealt with that kind of thing outside of being drunk at the cantina or like in a fight with their family do watch 
the, the volume of your voice, try and be respectful of how people are speaking with you. And beyond all else in Guanacaste, do not yell at somebody until you plan to totally sever your relationship with them from that point forward. Because yelling, I, I have seen almost zero circumstances where somebody has yelled at a Guanacasteco in sort of a degrading, you know, berating manner, and then kept a relationship with that person long term, again, because of that pride. If you're ready to fire somebody, you've decided that you absolutely can never have them as an employee again, go ahead, let her rip, yell a little bit so that you can feel better. But if you're trying to correct somebody's practices, if you're trying to improve them as an employee, you absolutely have to be delicate as to how you talk to them and never make them feel like they're being yelled at because it's simply not something that frequently happens between employers and employees here in this rural area of Costa Rica. Simple point really quickly, no throwing stuff. Uh, Guanacastecos really don't have, for example, tossing keys across the room when somebody says, hey, would you pass me this? Guanacastecos really are not big into tossing things across the room, especially never something that's food related, uh, just other kinds of things where as an American, there have been several times where I felt comfortable sort of, oh, here you go, catch this. And really I've gotten some awkward looks because that's a cultural sort of abrasive point here. You should hand something to anybody else, even if it's light, easy to throw, you want to shoot a basket or whatever. Um, to cut one more point, I, as a foreigner in one of these Guanacaste communities, I've begged and pleaded about this before in videos. Please, when you're going to any event that is important, even though it's hot outside and you just came from the beach, maybe you had a ton of beer, try and look nice for important events. A lot of Costa Ricans in these small communities might attach a lot of importance to some events that you might think are more just simple social gatherings. And a lot of them might also show up in clothing that to you might look, oh, that guy's just in a t-shirt and his shorts. I've been to a ton of these events and when communities get together, you'll see people wearing their absolute best t-shirt, their best shorts. They've shaved themselves absolutely down to a T. They have you know, some people will even get their hair cut refreshed or a little rose added. You'll smell the cologne. You'll see that even though the clothing might be humble, people in these rural areas in Western Costa Rica do show up in their nice clothes for events. They go shopping in their nicer clothes. Like if they're going on a big run into a nearby city, Santa Cruz, you'll see people getting off the bus looking about as darn nice as they can. Uh, guys in really good jeans with a leather belt, their clean white hat, the plaid shirts. And I implore you, nothing makes me uh, more <laughs> grossed out by foreigners than seeing some of these important events, you know, fiestas in a town, mass uh, funerals, different things associated with the church. Uh, and foreigners sort of feel like, ah, oh, yeah, I, I, I see people in their flip-flops. I'll go in my, my flip-flops. Well, make sure those are your church flip-flops, your church shorts, your church short, shirt. There's a difference between looking nice and trying to show respect for an event and wearing whatever because, hey, puta vida, everybody's wearing T-shirts. Um, finally, to not... Uh, obviously to try and avoid any conflict whatsoever, I do want to explain that Guanacaste still has a very strong, or many families here have very strong traditional or you know, beliefs related to gender roles that other cultures associate with times past. More specifically, you see that Guanacaste, 
Guanacaste's families frequently feel that the absolute role of women is one thing and men have a different role. There are two different roles. There's no mixing. You don't see some of these families allowing, uh, you know, necessarily the wife to bend her role. And you see a lot of times man is also very much in his role. This is an area of the world, Guanacaste, Costa Rica, that, yes, was pretty much a a wild frontier at the start of the 20th century. There were not a ton of people here. It's come to where it is, and I can say that every day you're seeing views get more and more progressive. But at the same time, you might meet a couple who absolutely they are the best people on earth. You want to develop a long-term relationship with their family. Maybe they work for you. You feel like you have this great exchange, like you're really equals. And you might find out that one spouse insists that the other is at home at a certain time every single day to serve food. Uh, It's difficult to navigate these situations as a foreigner here in Guanacaste, obviously. And all I can say as someone who's lived here 13 years and walked on this fine line is that really If you come from a position of respect to build a relationship with people, first and foremost, you can can try and discuss other things somewhere down the road. Your absolute main priority when you're getting to know families here and building these relationships is to come from a position of respect. You may see some things that don't necessarily appeal to your worldview, but You're living in Costa Rica, you're learning, obviously you're experiencing a new culture and it's perhaps yours to change over the long term once you've built rock solid relationships with families and then perhaps said, you know, I noticed uh, tal senora is really smart and she might want to go to university, we're interested in helping. But this is years down the road when you have a solid relationship, nothing will turn you off from the members of your community more than coming in with your perspective and trying to place it on others before your best of friends and before you have a solid mutual respect. I learned that the hard way in Peace Corps. I spent a year hoping that anybody would participate in my little community meetings, Uh, in the computer classes, English classes, on and on and on. And it wasn't until I had good relationships based on respect that I was actually able to truly uh, work with people and, you know, get some stuff done. I won't say make progress because that's a loaded term, but definitely saw a difference once uh, we had those relationships. And so I encourage you, Focus on the relationship first, someday down the road, maybe talk about some of the things. They might be burning plastic garbage behind their house. Bring that up after your great friends. Finally, I wanna give you two of the easiest, quickest pointers. If you're going to move to a small town in Guanacaste to become a liked person, and this is obviously very important to me because I spend all of my time trying to be liked. Remember, after this last point, we've got an amazing moment of beach zen with Jonas and Daniel. If you've moved to one of these small towns here in Guanacaste, you know, even if it's Playa Tamarindo, one of the larger multi, you know, large developed tourism hubs in the area, the two ways that you can become a liked person in town are, first of all, your driving habits and making those just like a good community member. Everybody is gonna see you in town constantly driving around. And there's no easier way to become known as a jerk foreigner who moved and ruined the town than by driving fast, kicking up dust, wheeling around corners where you almost hit people walking down the road, on and on and on. The reverse is absolutely amazing. If you do the exact opposite, 
if you drive slowly through town, if you wave, you know, if you make friends with everybody on the road, you know, sort of act like you know them, make little honks here and there. People are super communicative here in communities on the road. And I can't believe it when I see foreigners move here and begin to drive like jerks because it's like, you know, there are only 200 people who live here and every single Tico knows your car. Uh, in fact, we recently lent a vehicle to someone and I had to give the disclaimers, don't drive it fast or everybody think, gonna think I am a jerk here. Drive nicely and if you really want to get a good relationship with local families, start giving rides to people that you recognize as community members. It's something that's disappearing all over the world and obviously I'm not I, I want to clear myself of any liability for picking up hitchhikers. But again, if you're in one of these small towns, you're going to get to know who's who. And nothing can put you on the radar as a nice, friendly gringo faster than being somebody who pulls over even when people aren't asking for that ride. Even if you have terrible Spanish, you might know about where that person lives pull over and say, hey, you know, throw your bike in the back or, you know, I've picked up babies, you know, mothers, etc. It doesn't matter that they don't have a car seat. You don't have to worry. Pick up the people. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been talking a lot. Pick up the people you recognize. Give them a friendly ride. Use your vehicle as a resource for the community. I'm not saying now just go, you know, be Mother Teresa on the highway and get every poor lost soul out there. You'll be driving around to town often enough. You will eventually see some people who could obviously need rides. Uh, and one of the first people who ever really, you know, I spent time with here in Costa Rica, a friend, Tom, you know, he's been wonderful to the community in a million ways, but a lot of people love him because they've got a ride from him in the past. He never hesitates if he's got room, if he's able to do it, even if he's picking up somebody drunk, you know, if he recognizes them, he'll have them throw their stuff in the back and go for a ride. And absolutely over the years, he is beloved for that and many other reasons. The second tip for being a liked entity in your new Guanacaste community is as simple as being an overly friendly person in your local store. You're going to have a hard time building relationships with people and finding any opportunity to interact with other human beings everywhere. No matter what community you join in Costa Rica, you'll naturally gravitate towards expats where you've got an easier social in and all kinds of ways to connect with them more easily. You want to be someone at the store who knows the cashier's name, who knows the owner's name, who knows what's going on in their family. <laughs> Excuse me. You want to go in there and say hi to the five or six people who are already in there, the ones you recognize. Go back through that thorough greeting. How you been? How, you know, we're here in the bread aisle. How's your family? How's that horse? How's your farm? The corn looking good this year. Ah, lots of rain. Do this over and over and over again in your local store or supermarket. And I guarantee you, you will be able to. Um, <laughs> Greg, I appreciate your comment about Miami. You'll be able to build up this rapport in your community as the person who walks into that store with that oafish grin and immediately talks to people. And here in Costa Rica, it's 100% acceptable. One of the reasons that I've been able to fit in here, whereas in the US, to be honest, I have a hard time, or especially in junior high and high school, I had a really rough time, is that here you can very much be yourself. Costa Ricans love to see a character. They also love to exchange with people that they feel are genuine and if you only know six words of Spanish, make it your goal to say all of those six words to 10 people every time you're in the store. 
10 years of living in the community and you'll be a legend, even if you still only say those six words. The community will say, oh yeah, you know, Ronald always comes in and he's talking about the umbrella and the cerveza and this, that, and the other. And it works with time. Um, <coughs> excuse me very much, folks. This has been my chat on Costa Rica culture. I am just getting too big of a frog in my throat to keep going without a little bit more carrot juice. Next week, we'll be reviewing the questions posted in the comments all month as a roundup, a monthly Q&A. So Steve and Greg, we'll get to your points in that episode along with a bunch of other amazing information. I had promised a moment of beach zen today. And I want to show you what my four and seven-year-old were doing a little bit earlier this afternoon, uh, enjoying themselves here in Playa Junquial, Guanacaste, Costa Rica, and showing what it truly means to adapt to the Pura Vida Costa Rica lifestyle. Thanks very much for watching, and good night, folks.